Welcome to part two of my video series full of hints and tips to take your software testing career to the next level. If you've found yourself being made redundant or struggling to find work due to the pandemic, or you're just looking to take your software testing career to the next level, uh, this video post is for you. I'm gonna go through a couple of points today uh, about how to build out your profile, how to structure your resume, uh, enhancements you can make to LinkedIn, and a few other uh, sentiments around your online profile. So first of all, I'm going to walk you through uh, how my CV has evolved over time. Uh, in Australia, it's generally recommended to keep your CV less than two pages. There are other parts of the world where that is not actually sound advice. I've heard in Germany it's more common to have four pages, but it's really up to you. I've always tried to keep my CV under one page. Um, I have an experimental visual CV, uh, which has a timeline of my career. I wouldn't actually use this CV to apply for most jobs on the market because it is just a little too experimental, but I was exploring how I could restructure and revisualize the stereotypical CV. So this is experimental. I have a longer two-page CV. Uh, you can see it's easy to scan. Um, there's lots of white space to help break it up. I've tried to apply principles of design and user experience to, to lay out my CV. This one's a two-page CV. I have recent experience. You don't need to list your whole entire experience. If you're applying for a particular role, you can skip over some roles that aren't related to that job description either. You can also include a bunch of links. So if people do want to find out more about a very specific role or the tech involved or, or whatnot, if you've got links out to other, uh, other posts, uh, LinkedIn, or whatnot, you can use those in your CV as well. So I like to structure my CV so it's more like a profile. And if you want to find out more information, you can always uh, click through onto a link. Uh, back in 2014, my CV looked a little more plain, uh, but I still had some people give me a phone call during the application process saying, look, you're not quite suitable for this uh, candidate or this role, uh, but I really enjoyed reading your CV. So if you could like get a recruiter to call you up out of their busy day and go, hey, I actually enjoyed reading your CV. It's nice and different. That's uh, that's a bonus in my, in my mind. I actually enjoyed getting that feedback. I like my 2016 one. I was using a tool called Canva to help structure it. And I, I talk about skills in testing as using five, uh, five C's of testing. My 2017 is very similar, but I was just trying to experiment with a different way of visualizing skills and expertise. If you want to have some tips on how to improve your LinkedIn profile, Karen Tisdale on LinkedIn is a uh, LinkedIn profile writer. You can use her services and she'll write you the best profile uh, you will ever have. And she's got this article on how to uh, make your LinkedIn stand out during the times of pandemics. So she's got quite a few, this is a fairly lengthy post, but she's got quite a few uh, hints and tips on how to improve your LinkedIn. Um, and I use a lot of these uh, things samples in, in my uh, LinkedIn profile too. So I've got a custom image, uh, I've got a nice photo, uh, my summary uh, is broken up into sections. My profile is fairly easy to scan. I have video content, I also have recommendations. All of my past experiences have like a description about what they're, what was involved uh, and uh, some of my previous volunteering experience as well. Endorse, endorsements as well. If you're unsure if your LinkedIn photo is a good photo, Snapper is a tool uh, that you can use to analyze your LinkedIn photo. So my current one uh, is actually not all that great. I think that's, uh, I think it scores kind of lowly. Uh, but it is, uh, it gives you some advice on where to improve your, your LinkedIn photo. Uh, and it tends to look for things like if you've got a, a well-lit face, if you've got anything crowding your face. So for example, Snapper is giving me a 74 out of 100 for my LinkedIn photo. I actually got a professional photo shoot done for this photo. Uh, I should update it because this photo is now uh, two to three years old and my hairstyle has changed a little bit since then. And uh, so I would look at updating my profile photo at some point in the future. But it can be an expensive task if you pay for both makeup, hair 
and a photo shoot too. But Snapper provides uh, photo shoots on demand in the Sydney area. So other social media you might look into. Uh, I have a Twitter profile. Now Twitter for me is different from LinkedIn and I can share some resources on my LinkedIn social media marketing strategy as well. Uh, but it's a lot more cut down. Uh, I, I'm a lot more friendly and approachable and I, I joke more often on, on Twitter as opposed to LinkedIn. But I have uh, gotten to the job interview process uh, from seeing uh, people advertising uh, on Twitter that their team is looking for a candidate, feel free to reach out, that type of stuff. So I've been able to use Twitter as a uh, job hunting, uh, as just part of that, it helps with the job hunting process and it's all part of your online profile too. Uh, GitHub is another one where you can uh, have an online profile in GitHub and GitHub has recently uh, released pages so you can have an about me on, on GitHub and link to projects. Um, if you're using uh, GitHub as part of your online profile, uh, in your README file you should have like a, just a really brief description at the top of what this project is for, why you're using it to learn something new, and so just in case an engineering manager clicks through onto your profile, uh, you should give like a brief summary to the engineering manager of why this project is important to you. And just make it easier for them because they're not going to read through all of your code, they might just have a brief scan of your README file and go from there. Uh, my final sentiment uh, about building out an online profile and focusing on your CV and your LinkedIn is that the job application process is completely broken. Uh, I've gotten my last three job offers from networking, uh, attending meetup events and having an online presence. Uh, and that's going to be my uh, point three uh, tomorrow when I do the, the third video in this series. But that's just how you can go through setting up your online profile. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.